So it looks like today is tackling the dinette seat base day. And I might need to cut down that exhaust pipe because I've got to put a front of the box on and a side of the box on and then a couple of supporting pillars on that side and then test fit the top and figure out how it's going to be hinged um, and I'm also going to try and build a slide out so that the, the base will come forward and then extend all the way out across the van to be an occasional bed for an occasional single bed across the van um, and although it's almost impossible to see it can't interfere with the kitchen unit which is going to sit um, here it's going to end there so it's it's got a, it's only got a slide forward 20 centimeters or something but uh, anyway I'm going to cut the I've cut the wood already sitting there in the garage um, and I'll test fit it I, I think that's all I'm going to do I'm not going to make it secure obviously don't have the cushions for it and I need to finish lining the wall with vapor barrier and ply uh, after I've cut the exhaust down um, and there's one more hole to cut in the van wall I've got two there now for the mains and for the exhaust for the boiler but the water tanks which I don't have yet will probably have a filler point here which annoyingly might have to be boxed in to come into the van and down through the floor in that corner because the tank fits under the floor from there back to the just before the wheel arch it's either a filling point here or a filling point there but of course this is the shower so there's absolutely no way um, I can have a filling point there the only other possibility is to have it in the outside wall above the wheel arch and for the pipe to come in over the electrics and down through the floor but I, I really don't like that plus I think it's quite likely that it will go through the floor I know it might be the right side of the chassis rail but it sounds a bit more complicated to me I think the Occam's razor would state that it's easier to box it in in the footwell of the dinette seat here so uh, let's get on with that okay, and the first step is to cut back some of this excess pipe work that I've got It's one of those occasions where I've no idea what I did wrong. I've clearly measured incorrectly. Um, the width, well, everything can be cut down, but it means I've got uh, wood to throw away, which is really disappointing. I'm checking my measurements. Uh, so the seat front there I've got at 600 by 905. 600 is too high, it's supposed to be 500, and of course. The side is too high at 600 as well, so I've got to lose 10 centimeters off each of those, which is just a waste. I can obviously repurpose some of it. But 905 is also too wide. Um, as you can see here, there's no reason why I need that overhang. So I don't know what I've done wrong. Measuring up again. Um, this I'm using, this is based on the Evo design seat base, which has got a schematic with measurements, so yeah, makes it even worse. I don't know why I didn't just copy them. Anyway, um, remeasuring and cutting and then refitting. Top tip for cutting ply. If you want to get a clean cut with a track saw, cut twice. First on a real low pass. So the blade doesn't go too deep into the wood. again for the full cut. <laughs> Not 
bad. That looks absolutely huge. And it has to be, because it's got to cover the heater and it's got to seat two people. Dare I sit on this side? <laughs> Could <I> probably do. <laughs> ah. First, first seating on new seat. So that's going to need a lot of cushions back there to bring that forward. Can't see behind me, but there's a big gap. But actually, it's a perfect position. The view out the front's great, which was one of the things that was missing in Walt. Well, it wasn't missing. The um, the seat was high in comparison to the windscreen, and actually. Quite often you, you were looking down at the road you couldn't see the view up here you've got the same if not a better view than the driver and the passenger in the cab plus you've got a side window that you can see out again in Walt the window was too low yeah too low so you really couldn't see out that side so it wasn't a great passenger vehicle but here you've got windows all round which is great the only problem is uh, leg space because let's not forget and I know this is an age-old problem with sizing dinettes. Um, while I've got enough space here as a passenger, when the driver's seat swizzled, uh, swizzled, swiveled, um, there's going to be a table here. Obviously, it's the dining room. So we need to figure out how much depth we've got and how much space we've got for knees knocking and feet touching and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, I used to own an Adria Twin uh, and it had the, f the front dinette, it's a very common setup isn't it, in, um, in a Fiat Ducato uh, wheelbase motorhomes. And space is definitely a premium even though most of those were uh, conversions on a long wheelbase, but the dinette would still feel a bit cramped. I obviously had to compromise a bit here because I'm in a medium wheelbase van, but you know I thought this through and this is the main the primary lounging area, I probably won't be sitting here, it, would be, it might be a smaller person, but it could be four adults around the table, so it needs to work for all occasions. So I'll swivel, swivel the driver's seat and see how this works. And if we need to make the base shorter, which we probably don't, then I'll have to redo the exhaust ducting for the boiler, which I've already done, make it a bit shorter, and then uh, test fit again. Okay, a bit later in the day as you can see from the sunlight, lovely sunlight. It's uh, only just getting warm. It's March, middle of March. It's been a long old winter. But anyway, um, this is looking better. It's not quite square, but this is only a sort of first fixed, first fix installation. But you do get much more of a feel for the size of the dining area, or the dinette. Um, and I've swiveled the driver's seat. Probably can't see it, but let's just turn you. So that's, that's the driver's seat. So it's gonna be tight. Um, this is gonna come back to there, obviously, so I'll be able to sit back a couple more inches, but in theory, if I was sitting there, you wouldn't get another bloke sitting here unless his legs were between mine. Kinky. So uh, the more this can go back the better. There's the chance for the, the base being slightly shallower as well, but first fit. 
Anyway, it feels good. Um, yeah. <gasps> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Something just collapsed. So in the spirit of not filming everything, um, I've not been filming everything. Um, but I'll bring you up to speed um, on a couple of bits. Done a cab shelf. I really didn't want to do one, but I'm already worrying about storage. Um, so that was pretty straightforward. I've just fashioned some brackets um, from spare parts, a right angle bracket. What was that one? I can't even remember what that was. It was a spare, just a spare bit of bracket knocking around. I've banged my head quite a lot, <laughs> but uh, it's, um, it's bound to be useful. I mean, bedding, if nothing else. And I, so I've installed the, well, I haven't installed, I've knocked up the seat base for the dinette um, to see how huge it is, and it's huge, and to try and figure out the sliding bed mechanism that I'm going to work on. Um, I'm just figuring out what to do with the blinds. I've actually just ordered some IKEA blinds, um, which will fit in behind the lining. I need to build a frame for those when they arrive, so that's to come. I uh, went ahead and made a locker from my lovely lightweight 15mm ply, same as all the other stuff. Um, stuff I got cheap from Gary up north. Uh, it's dearly, ex really dear for all plywood at the moment, but this stuff is seconds. Uh, bought from companies that go bust and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, so it saved me 25 quid a sheet, I think. All the same, being very careful with my cuts, and I actually annoyingly had to cut this down because it was too came out too far. Um, I'm going to put a skylight in here at some point when I can afford 300 quid or whatever they are now. So originally it came out, the, the cupboard, the locker came out to about here and I had to cut it back because the skylight will actually do what the one at the back's done and come quite a long way over. But that should work out okay. I've also recessed the top of the doors. Doors will mount into this obviously and sit on the front. But I'm going to put um, an LED strip um, on the back of the top of this horizontal piece which will not only light upwards to give a nice mood light and lighten the ceiling a touch, but it will light, light the inside of the cabinets as well. I figured I could do the, the job of two lights with one. So that uh, I just need to cut the. So I've got to cut these are 18, going to be 18 mil doors. And I think I found the right hinges. They're going to sit in there and flush to the top of this and be sprung on, on a sprung hinge, which will keep them up. So not soft clothes, but kind of everything. What else? Um, I'm just about to bring in the back of the shower. Um, and I've, I've measured it in the same way as I measured this one on the, on the left here with plumb bob. Um, there's quite a lot of pipe work and wiring back there. It's a slight worry that this is going to be too high for the back lip of the shower, which I think is four centimetres up. That cuts six. So I just need to be mindful of that. Okay, let's bring in the shower wall and see if it fits. centimeters wide 70 deep the shower tray that I've ordered I haven't well, I haven't ordered <laughs> shower tray that's on my list so there's the shower with me in it but it's big enough still haven't quite decided on what glue to fit that's the gap I'm worried about there the lining but uh, I might have to hide that with the cladding that's obviously going to go on all four walls once they're up, but you see how much tighter it is on this side. In fact, that's too tight, might have to shave that back. So 
so I can hide it, but disappointing that I didn't do that cut right initially. Hey ho. Okay, just had a tidy up, and now I need to, this is the back of the shower room wall. Uh, here we're gonna have the wardrobe, which is why I've got this, there you can't see it, I've got a recess in the wall because I want to make sure that I can get a better clothes hanger in there. Ah, oh, you still can't see it. Oh, yes, you can. So that, that bit of wood is the back. It tapers in, it's a recess, so you can hang clothes hangers in that way. Um, another consideration, apart from the fact that all the wiring comes out the wall here, is that somewhere, <laughs> and I haven't quite figured out where, I guess probably here, because down here would be too low, so here is going to be a sink that slides into the shower like a drawer you just pull the handle through in the shower and it slides out that way so I've got to factor in things like uh, how to do the the pipe the wastewater pipe um, which is going to be fun I haven't really thought about that much but uh, for now I'm going to cut the next vertical There'll be the third vertical piece of wood, which will be the back of the wardrobe. It's going to be slightly further in from the side of the shower. Everything's sort of stepped, so we've got the widest part at the back of the van, so we can still use it for as a van for loading stuff. Um, so it'll be stepped in slightly, and then the bed section at the back is stepped in, I think, even more. So I've got my plans to refer to, and I'm just going to get the measurements and mark them up on the floor and then cut wood. This might be of interest. I've seen a few people fitting IKEA blinds um, in in vans and I've never seen anyone document the process so I'll show you what I'm doing um, I had these the verticals already in and they're just uh, screwed straight into the van wall and I have put crossbars in at the top and the bottom using my Craig jig and the blind is just sitting at the moment just sitting in here I'm going to put a batten behind this, which the blind will mount to, but you can see it's already quite a snug fit, and it's got a bit of a rebate behind here, all the way down the side, that's not fit, fixed yet, in fact none of them are fi fixed, and that bottom fillet sits quite nicely um, below the window itself, and it's slightly recessed on this because of course in, in front of this I'm going to put ply and tidy it up like I've done with the back doors um, so I'm going to screw through from the front into this fillet and do the same on this side put the mount piece across the top and on this side you can actually see how far the blind goes down this is in the shower room it's going to be in front of the window all the, all the back side will be painted black I think, but I might, I might actually stick something on the window to block out the light. But I'm just about to mount this uh, piece into the side. Let me show you. Into the side of the vertical. That's not going to work because that's in the way. Oh, okay, yeah, that will work like that. And that will provide or create the casing for the blind to run in as you pull it down. Let's try it, see what it looks like.
So <laughs> this is why no one else has documented this. It's bloody faff, that's why. Lots of trimming. Oh, oh definitely. see what I'm doing but basically I'm just checking the clearance. Well, there we go. <laughs> it's nearly dark. It took pretty much the whole day but i um, very happy with it. Uh, it sits in a channel on either side which is what I was fiddling around with. Just wanted to make sure that it was as stable and as straight as possible but actually I'm worried it's, that it's going to rattle. Um, it will rattle. So I just need to put some brushes or something in at the top of the channel on that side to stop that. And then of course um, I've got to put the uh, ply, the three mil ply over the front, which will come probably come up a little bit higher and then dip down so that when you've got the blind closed, you're able to reach that, but the ply hides the rest of it. See what I mean? Could have, could have gone lower to be honest, but there we go. Oh, very tidy though in the end. Shame it doesn't go up at the same pace on either side, but and it's mounted at the top here, and there are brackets to release that mounting, which I can probably get to somehow. But um, yeah, it looks good, doesn't it? And it'll look even better when it's framed by the ply lining. So next, sliding door. These are all painted up and lined as I wanted now. And the results are pretty good. And the uh, blind's nice and discreet. It's still breached this nice and easily. And that extra little dip at the bottom means that the blind can go right down for full blackout, which is great. So. I think this is great. Not obviously no fly screen, but it does the job to black out the van in the evening. And same on the sliding door. This one was a little bit harder, and I've had to build a bigger frame um, around this one, which limits the scope of the window, but actually works quite well for. Uh, sort of backdrop to the worktop. Um, it's slightly at an angle, this one. I don't know why it's hanging like that, but it shouldn't bother anyone. And um, yeah, I think it's really smart. Also, got a little bit of padding at the top, at the back here, to stop the cassette from rattling when, when driving, because that was making quite a racket. But. It's not a bad installation in the end. Just glad I don't have to do it again.